So if you are buying a Mac on the Apple Store and you want to add some internal storage, whether it's a laptop like this or a desktop, you see that Apple takes premium prices for their internal storage if you want to have it internally in the Apple device. So is it worth paying the premium price for that internal storage? Well, in some cases, but you can also buy an external enclosure, add your own SSD, and actually in some cases even get faster speeds from that external enclosure and SSD compared to the internal internal hard drive in your Mac and in this video I'm going to show you what kind of parts you need where you want to buy them and what kind of SSDs you need to get this uh, working it's going to be later on in this video so if you want a 13 inch MacBook Pro with two terabytes of internal storage that will add $800 on your bill if you just want one terabyte it adds $400 for storage prices these are actually insanely expensive if you look at an online store like Amazon Amazon or Newegg, the price of a 2 terabyte quality SSD drive, well I'm talking about a Samsung 980 Pro or something similar, it's $130. And Apple wants $800 to upgrade to 2 terabyte in your Mac. That's completely insane. Even if you can if afford it, <laughs> there are other ways to do this. If you look at the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the one terabyte model, upgrading that from one terabyte to four terabytes of storage adds a thousand dollars on the price. While you can get uh, another four terabytes of SSD for like 200, 250 dollars, something like that. As you also know, we cannot just open up these and add SSDs to these. Uh, those days are far gone. The SSDs are soldered onto the motherboard and you cannot easily replace them. So there are some reasons to pay the Apple tax and to get the internal storage. And one of the reasons are speed. If you get, a, for example, a Mac Mini or an M1 MacBook Pro or something like that, and you get the 512 gigabyte and below, the speed of the internal SSD there will be a little lower. If you get the one terabyte or above, the speed of the internal SSD will be a lot higher because uh, it's it's kind of how the layout of the chips are on the motherboard and some things like that. So in this case, if you get an external enclosure, that way you can actually get higher speed on that enclosure compared to the internal speed of your Mac, depending on the uh, hard drive size. Another reason is convenience. Getting as much internal storage as you need will get you more mobile and you don't have to drag along extra accessories like dongles and things like that. And I know for a lot of people, their Mac is their sole computer it's really important for their work it has to work you have to have the support from apple and all of that and that's one of the reasons i can see why you are why it's worth paying the premium price for getting internal storage you just don't want to hassle you want the best possible speed you want the best possible storage okay it costs a lot but uh, you can do that and uh, you don't have to worry about anything else Let's say if you produce music, as some of uh, the people here do, and you have big sample libraries, it can be convenient to have those stored on the internal storage for fast and easy access, especially if you have a laptop. And editing high quality raw video, it could be nice to have some free space to that while you are editing it before you uploading it to some external storage or a NAS or some backup solution. But in this video, if you want to save some money on storage, and here are some options I would consider doing in terms of storage. And if you just want to jump straight to the kind of SSD thing, you have to check that later on in this video. One thing you can do if you're not that interested in speed is actually to leverage the iCloud storage. Apple now have more storage tiers, giving you up to 12 terabytes of storage, but that of course comes with a monthly cost. If you turn on optimize storage on your Mac and you put the files in your document folder or on the desktop or some some of the other iCloud folders, it will automatically put the files in iCloud for you. And it will also decide what kind of file is going to keep in the cloud and what kind of files is going to keep uh, physically on your Mac. It will look like all files are there. But if it's not physically on your Mac, it will show you a cloud symbol besides the file name if it's stored in uh, iCloud. If you need to edit a file, it will automatically download the file and make it available for you when you try to open it. This of course requires that you have access to the internet and probably not using a metered connection or something like that. So that is one option you can do if you're not really that reliant on speed and you have to sync it fast and things like that. 
But another option is using an external hard drive. So there's a lot of options there. If you just want something small and simple, I would honestly just go for some kind of Samsung S external SSD or some known brand like that. You can get a two terabyte drive for like $130 or on Amazon. And uh, I will put some links to some good ones below this video so that you can check them out, some affiliate links. But remember that the transfer speed on these uh, drives from uh, brands are limited uh, mostly to maximum around 800 or 900 megabytes uh, per second. If you want the best possible external SSD speed up to 3000 megabytes per second, you need to get an external enclosure and buy the correct SSD separately. This case from Akasis have shown in tests that it performs pretty good on uh, M-based Macs and also other computers. And you can usually get it from Amazon for like uh, around $100, I think. And after that, you need to buy an SSD for it. And if you look at the website for the manufacturer of this case, they have suggestions for what type of SSD you should get for these and how the speeds are. But they, in most cases, uh, everyone recommends the uh, Samsung 980 Pro SSDs. These are known SSDs in the PC community. They are known for their high quality and they, they work really, really great. And they have good speeds in uh, these external enclosures uh, as well. Nevertheless, I will leave the affiliate links to below to Amazon where you can get this and uh, get your own drive for your own system. I am considering an updated MacBook Pro when they get released and I'm probably just going for one terabyte of storage uh, on them because it's so extremely expensive. Ex it's more expensive in the country I live in Norway. It's uh, much less expensive in, in the States. So you get one with one terabyte and then you can get this Akasis uh, external enclosure and you can actually put up to eight terabyte of uh, SSDs in those enclosures and it's just a much lower price than what you get at Apple. So how do you organize your storage? Share your comments below. And if, if you have nothing else to do, you can watch the video that YouTube suggests over here. That's all. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.